As part of my search for a bike that would be, for me, the ideal upgrade from the Vulcan S, a while ago I test rode the Harley Davidson Sport Glide and loved it. Today I went out on the Indian Scout. Did I love it? Spoiler alert, yes I did. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Spell and welcome to the channel. Before we jump into it, this model is a couple of years old, so there might be some small differences here and there. I will let you know when that's the case. Also, this is again a long video, so I add the chapters to it in case you want to skip any part and move to the next section. You can see it directly on the timeline and in the description. Now that you know the bike, let's speak about one of the main important points, that is the looks. My friends, she is a beauty. I could sit here all day, admire her, the craftsmanship that went into designing this piece of art. Look at that engine, what a beautiful piece of artwork. I love it how it is there in full view for you to appreciate all its details. There is no frame or anything obstructing our view of the heart and soul of this bike. You can see it was designed in a way to really show it in all its glory, to be a focal point whenever you look at the bike. I could sit down in front of it and appreciate it for hours. Indian, well done. And look at those big pipes, man, big and bold. I love them, it really gives the bike a mean and aggressive look. Some say the pipes are way too big for the bike, but for me that creates an awesome contrast. It's like if they were there making a statement, a bold statement. The bike follows a more classic American uh, cruiser look and uh, the round old school looking headlight is testament of that. Skinny front forks guiding us down to those chunky big fat tires. Another awesome and bold contrast. I love how the front fender extends a good way down and the curvature it has at the bottom. You can see how the rear fender uh, follows the same line too. It is a small detail, but really looks smart. As we are speaking about the rear fender, I really like the way it looks. The design of the brake light is awesome. It looks classy, but at the same time, very modern. Oh, and that big number plate is the cherry on top of the cake, isn't it? You guys in the US will be filled with envy now. I'm sure you are. As you're looking at the back of the bike, what do you think of the exposed dual rear shocks? They really look great on the bike, don't they? Everything on this bike was made to be seen and appreciated and those are no different. Moving up, we have the usual controls you will find on any other bike. Unlike Harley's, of course, you have a single indicator selector here on the left. Um, we have again a very classic looking cluster display with analog speedometer, digital tachometer, gear indicator, total mile, strip meter, low fuel lamp and engine temp. 
One small note here, the current 2021 model has an identical cluster display, but in black, so it gives a more modern look to it. This brown leather seat gives the bike a different flair. It breaks from all the black and chrome, which on this bike is not uh, much. It has, in my opinion, just enough chrome. This is where things changed again. So the latest model has a sportier rider and pillion black leather seat. Anyway, if you prefer brown leather seat, be that solo or rider plus pillion combination, Eden offers it as an optional extra. Hey, and before you continue, go ahead, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell as I want you to be the first one to know every time we post a new video. All right, let's swing our leg over and see what this bike has to offer. The first thing to note is the seat height. It is extremely low at 649 millimeters. That's an incredible five centimeters shorter than the Vulcan S. Needless to say that the vast majority of riders will be able to flat foot this bike easily. The fact the seat is narrow helps it even more. That will naturally make you feel more comfortable on the bike. It puts your mind at ease as it is easy to plant both feet on the ground whenever needed. And you know, psychologically that makes you feel more comfortable in handling the bike. And how comfortable is the seat? Well, actually not too bad. I rode for about one hour and 20 minutes. And yeah, at the end of the ride, my arms uh, started to get a bit numb, but not in compared to the pain I had to endure <laughs> when I had the stock seat on the Vulcan S. On that, after 45 minutes or so, I would be in pain. Yeah, it is not a huge improvement, but every little helps. The suspension is good too. It filters the bumps uh, on the road much better than the Vulcan S. See, I'm going over these bumps on purpose to see how she reacts. And so far, so far so good actually in that sense would be a small improvement on the Vulcan S. I like the position I had my legs. Uh, it was like if I had the Vulcan S between reduced and standard reach. It is a position that provides a better control over the bike. Not entirely sure how comfortable it would be for me on the long ride. I much prefer to have a more fit forward position but at least on this short ride I felt perfectly comfortable on it. Now my arms, well the handlebars were a bit too low for my liking. It would really benefit from having uh, some higher bars. Also the handlebar position put my hands on an awkward uh, position there. Uh, it was strange to operate the clutch and the indicator controls and so on with that angle on my wrist. I'm pretty sure it will be a matter of getting used to it, but uh, it really felt odd to me. Because it will impact your comfort, uh, especially if you ride in heavy traffic, start and stop type of situation. It is worth mentioning that uh, the clutch is way heavier than the light as a feather clutch on the Vulcan S. In a way related to the handlebars was my position on the bike. I felt I was set on a good position uh, in terms of how close it put me to the bars and the foot pegs, but it also felt like I was sat on top of the bike instead of in the bike. Naturally, if the handlebars don't compensate for that, uh, they will feel and, in matter of fact, be lower than desired, or at least lower than what I would prefer. The engine is very smooth. There are no unpleasant vibrations or anything like that. Actually, after dropping the Indian Scout, I jumped straight to my Vulcan S and recorded some of my thoughts about it. Let's hear it. So the engine, much smoother on the Scout. I hear, here I'm having some um, vibrations already, like on my hands and everything, whilst the other one, although it has vibrations as well but i find those are much smoother this one is kind of very 
buzzy riding position this one is a bit better my legs are slightly forward and uh, the other ones i think i were i was more or less like this whilst this one i'm um, just a tiny bit more extended yeah i think the way i'm sat on this one is uh, is a bit is a bit better i'm slightly lower on the bike than this car my arms are slightly higher too i think the other one was a bit more li like here i didn't really enjoy that much obviously two up with a single seat would not be a great idea but the current model comes with a pillion seat so your pillion will at least have somewhere to sit i'm not sure how comfortable it would be uh, it looks great with its slim design but uh, it might uh, become a bit uncomfortable again i don't know for sure as i didn't try it but uh, no it's purely based on the looks that i'm saying this if you own a scout and ride with a pillion on the stock seat please let me know in the comments how they feel about it so yeah in general she feels more comfortable than the vulcan s let's speak about performance now the scout is powered by a 1133 cc liquid cooled v-twin with 97 newton meters of torque and 94 horsepower breaking the tradition of having an air-cooled engine it delivers the power on a very linear and controlled way and there is plenty of it on offer on the motorway it was doing 70 miles an hour at 3700 rpms and still had lots left in case i needed to overtake zero to 60 with me riding a, a day or two i guess but looking on the internet some websites claim she will do it in 3.7 seconds whilst on youtube you'll see people doing it in about four seconds either way on my books that means she is a rocket off the line it felt like i had to feed her a bit more throttle than what i have to on the vulcan s but you know uh, that's some of those nuances that changes from bike to bike and whilst at the beginning i had to do a more conscious effort 25 minutes into the ride and i was totally used to it but at the same time first gear is much smoother than the vulcan s seriously it really feels much smoother and refined and because of that she's happier to ride on first gear for longer too you don't feel the need to change to second gear immediately as you do on the vulcan s well that's not just first gear the gears on the scout are really long that makes it much easier when riding in heavy traffic she seems to be a bit rev happy she likes it when you push her the sensation i got is that she's a bit of a hooligan bike that might be due to a combination of factors like how light the bike is how small it feels and the amount of power available the reality is you sit on the bike and instantly find the need to go fast and i like that for like 10 seconds after that it just becomes too scary but no seriously if you like to ride hard this bike might very well be the bike you are looking for but if you want to ride at a slow pace to enjoy the views and not to see and be seen she is more than happy to do it for you she's very happy for you to cruise at 30 miles an hour fourth gear at around 2200 rpms now let's see how easy is it to find neutral <laughs> very easy easy peasy she is just as light just as big or should i say small and almost as nimble as the vulcan s almost i think it might be the result of having those fat tires or simply because it is not my bike and i wasn't 100 percent used to it yet but regardless it is a very easy and fun bike to ride and very stable too as you can see in the presentation she weighs 256 kilos that's only 20 odd kilos more than the vulcan s but i don't think you feel any of those extra kilos and overall length she is only one centimeter long than the vulcan s at two meters and 32 centimeters as the seat is uh, five centimeters shorter than the vulcan s that could be the reason why I could not feel the weight difference. So you can see how similar to the Vulcan S this bike is. But anyway, that's just one part of the story. 
Once you get used to those fat tires, it is easy to throw her from side to side and take her to enjoy some mountain uh, roads. Lean angle is a tiny bit less than the Vulcan S at 31 degrees, uh, but that already allows you to have great fun. On the other hand, if you get stuck in traffic often, don't worry. Slow spin maneuvers on this bike are so easy. She just wants to stay upright. You can tell the engineers who designed this bike really did a fantastic job keeping her extremely well balanced. The way she delivers the power helps a lot when you need to feed her just a bit of throttle and keep her on the friction zone for those more challenging slow spin maneuvers. Of course, the fact she is very light and low really helps. At the end of the day, this is the sum of all parts. Uh, it's what we call teamwork. Brakes, okay, I think uh, I would say they are similar to the to the Vulcan S. And the back one, back one is good. I mean, it is uh, at Kuwait. I think, given uh, the price you pay for this bike, you could have slightly better brakes on the front. I mean, if my Vulcan S had cost half of it, brakes the same. Uh, you would expect this one to uh, to be better on that department well in all departments in terms of sound uh, you know how biased I am towards a V-twin so that would be no surprise to you when I say that I loved it in all honesty it sounds great even with that stock exhaust that I will say it again looks awesome the exhaust has a very interesting gurgling and rumble. You can perfectly hear that traditional V-twin sound coming out of it. For a stock exhaust, I find it quite good. Yes, it could have a deeper note and be a tiny bit louder, but as it is, it is not too bad at all. I remember riding behind a guy on a Scout with super loud exhausts and it was so loud that not only I could not hear my bike, I know that's not too difficult, but worse, I could not even hear the music I had playing on my helmet. What the hell, that was mental. Anyway, I digress. Uh, the stock exhausts, yeah, it could have an even more pronounced gurgling and rumble, but again, for a stock exhaust, uh, it sounds pretty good. We can hear it very well on the video. But of course, needless to say, it has the potential to sound even better with an aftermarket exhaust. And how versatile is the Scout? Do you commute on a bike? Do you spend your ride in city traffic, filtering, doing slow speed maneuvers, starting and stopping? Well, if that's your case, not a problem. She will perform quite well on that situation. She is small and light, so it makes it easy and effortless to take her in and out of the garage every morning. And those features, together with how nimble she is and how smoothly she delivers the power, helps a lot when you traffic. At the end of the day, you want to unwind and find release to all the stress and shit you had to deal during work. So you take the long way back home. You take her to some countryside roads, ride it hard or slow, doesn't really matter, enjoy some nice views, breathe the pure and fresh air the countryside offers and just clear your mind. Then and only then you make your way home, have a nice dinner and sit by the fireplace with a nice weed dram whilst contemplating how lucky you are to be able to enjoy life on two wheels. Two fantastic wheels that enables you to enjoy a full variety of rides with no problems whatsoever. Come weekend and you can take her on long rides too but unfortunately that's where in my opinion she starts to struggle a bit. 
The fuel tank is smaller than the Vulcan S at 12.5 liters. So whilst of course it is totally possible to go on long rides, you need to plan and be prepared to stop more often to refuel. From standard, she doesn't come with saddlebags. So if you want to take some things with you, maybe food, camera gear and uh, things like that, uh, it proves to be a bit tricky. You can use a backpack for that if you want, but at least for me, saddlebags would be the ideal solution as it enables me to take more things with me and uh, are especially useful on motorcycle trips be that camping or staying in a hotel uh, where naturally you need to take more stuff with you. Also the seat is not the most comfortable seat out there. As I said before after one hour and 20 minutes ride my arse started to get a bit numb so I doubt I would be able to ride for much longer before being in pain and needing to stop. So not ideal when you want to go on uh, long rides. When it comes to fun factor, well, my smile was huge. She is an extremely fun bike to ride. It's, it just makes it easy when uh, she is very light, uh, nimble and offers crazy amounts of power. You really feel like uh, just going out and take her to her favorite playground. Twisty roads carve those curves with ease, uh, brake hard before it, accelerate even harder when you get out of it and appreciate that awesome sound when you really push her. It's awesome. Doesn't matter if you like to ride fast or slow, she will always put a big smile on your face. Unfortunately, now I have to break the fun and tell you about the things I didn't like about the Scout. Let me start with the position of the handlebars. They are a bit too low for me and uh, the way it is angled put my wrists on an awkward position. I found the clutch to be heavy, uh, at least when compared to the one on the Vulcan S. That can make the ride a bit uncomfortable and tiring if I'm stuck on the start and stop of the city traffic. As someone who rides during the night, uh, I was sad to see the headlight was not LED, uh, especially at this price point. The fuel tank is small at 12.5 liters. It is just 1.5 liters smaller than the Vulcan S, but that's still a downgrade and uh, something that will directly impact on a negative way, my right. And I was very surprised to see there wasn't a fuel gauge, not even on the latest model. I might sound a bit harsh here, but Indian, it's 2021 and you are not selling a cheap off-road 125cc bike. Sorry, but it is unacceptable on a bike that is as expensive as a car. Moving to the things I like about the Scout. I absolutely love the looks of it. The attention to detail is something else. Again, well done Indian, she is a masterpiece. And what to say about that engine, it's the heart and soul of the bike. It's very smooth and powerful. You can ride it at low RPMs just to relax and uh, as a V-twin it will feel at home doing that. If all of a sudden you get into a maniac mode, Oh boy, she will deliver. Twist that throttle and hold on tight. Because she is light, small and very well balanced, she is a joy to handle. Be that when doing slow speed maneuvers or on the twisties. Simply perfect. And for what she is, a cruiser, and what she offers and for what the competition offers, she is very well priced with many different options to go for. Focusing now on the ownership costs, here in the UK and starting with the road tax, you will pay £93 a year. You will need to take the bike in for the first service at 500 miles, followed by another one at 2500 and then again at 5000 miles. After that, all services are completed every 5000 miles. In terms of costs, uh, I could not get a quote for every single service, but uh, looking around, it would average about £240 a service. 
when you add the road tax to it it means it will cost you 333 pounds a year or about 27 pounds 75 a month just to keep the indian scout on your garage it's clear in the case of the scout that i would have to add some things to her to try and make her fit my needs some things i would uh, just have to deal with it as it is the case with the small fuel tank so what things would I need to add let me start with saddlebags uh, ideally a quick release one that's something I need and can't go without checking the Indian website quick release saddlebags will cost you an extra 1204 pounds that's expensive jeez oh anyway as you know i ride during the night and uh, i don't think the standard headlight on the scout will be any good in properly illuminating the road ahead indian offers uh, an led headlight as an official accessory at the cost of uh, 340 pounds and finally the stock seat if i want to comfortably enjoy some long rides a new and improved seat is needed that will have a cost of about uh, 300 pounds, maybe more, depending if I choose to have the stock seat reupholstered or if I choose to go with a saddleman or a Corbin. So to make her fit my needs, I would still need to spend a total of uh, 1,844 pounds, bringing the total cost of the Scout to 13,839. So my final thoughts on the Indian Scout. Would it be a good upgrade? Oh yes, she is a fantastic bike. Did she put a smile on my face? Hell yes, yeah, she did. Generally speaking, she is very similar to the Vulcan S and feels, in a way, very familiar. But she is much more refined and you can see and feel the quality there. But that similarity and familiarity can be a downfall. Sometimes, especially after being a bit more used to it, it made me feel like I was on my own bike. It wasn't uh, a day and night difference. That said, she is not by any means a beginner's bike. That's far too much power for someone who is starting out, especially in the US as you can do the MSF course on a 250cc bike and then jump straight to whatever bike you want here in scotland things are a bit different uh, where you are limited to what displacement size you can ride depending on your age for example due to my age and saying that out loud makes me feel very old now i could get my full motorcycle license using the direct access scheme so that means I had to spend uh, one full day completing my compulsory basic training on a 125cc bike, learning the basics of the basics about riding motorcycles. I was then ready to complete the direct access scheme on a Suzuki SV650 with 75 horsepower. Uh, then at the end of the course I would be allowed to ride any bike I want. The course is divided in two models and runs for six full days, completing slaloms, U-turns, slow speed maneuvers, swerves, emergency braking, uh, riding on public roads with your instructor, learning and getting tips to have great control of the bike, obey the rules of the road of course, observe signs, road condition and hazards and react in conformity and in general you learn how to be a safe rider at the end of day three and day six you complete an exam that if you are successful means you finally have your full motorcycle license and can go buy whatever bike you want so in my opinion when your training is this good and because you are already used to ride a powerful bike I believe you will be more than able to deal with the Scout. To be fair, the SV650 does 0 to 60 in about uh, 3.2 seconds. It might not have the horsepower and torque of the Scout, but she's faster anyway. All that to say, if you have proper training like us in Europe, the Scout can perfectly be your first bike. Is she the ideal bike for me? I don't know yet. I mean. 
she fails to deliver at some of the categories that I consider important for me but at the same time she is the cheapest bike I'm considering so it might be worth and wise to keep her in mind as a future upgrade but anyway I still have about six months or so to think about all the options pros and cons of each option and closer to the time I might actually do a video comparing every option for those that have a scout or test road one what do you think about the bike do you agree with uh, my opinion let me know in the comments below I would like to thank Levi from Alba Customs for the opportunity to test ride this awesome machine if you are around make sure to pay the guys and girls of Alba Customs and South Tire Motorcycles a visit and have a look at the awesome motorcycles they have available I hope this video was useful to you don't forget to give me the thumbs up and if you have any questions write a comment below thanks for watching ride safe stay safe and i'll see you soon Kadosh.